federal government issues flood alerts, activate state emergency centers as governors order evacuation. Gombe residents welcome decline in tomato costs. Police launch manhunt for killers of three vigilante members in Imo. And on the international scene, 11 dead, 19 missing in Indonesia's landslide. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thank you for joining us in our details. The federal government says it has activated the various emergency centers across the country to help in tackling the flood situation in states. It also urged residents living in flood-prone locations to move away from floodplains, stressing that responses from citizens in some of the affected states had been below expectation. The government disclosed this through the National Emergency Management Agency, the NEMA, as some states' governments announced the commencement of river dredging in their domains, while others ordered residents in flood-prone areas to evacuate. <clears throat> the report stated that the Minister of Work Resources and Sanitation, Joseph Utsev, who dropped the red alert during a press briefing in Abuja, warned that 21 more states might suffer flooding. He stated this against the background of the Wednesday downpour, which grounded business and commercial activities in Lagos and Ogun states. A devastating flood has ravaged Karugo village in Gariki, local government area of Jagawa state, displacing residents and destroying properties worth millions of Nara. The flood, which occurred midnight on Saturday, affected over 100 houses. Residents of the village who said they were caught unaware by the heavy rain said the flood also contaminated their sources of water, adding that many residents were forced to seek shelter at nearby hospitals and schools. The Karigo village head, Ali Nasara, described the situation as serious, saying many residents had lost their livelihoods. Executive Secretary of the State Emergency Management Agency, SEMA, Haruna Meiriga, who visited the village, promised that government will provide the necessary assistance to the affected residents and ordered his team to facilitate the construction of an embankment and emergency drainage to divert water in case of future flooding. The Edo State Government has asked residents living in river Rhine areas to relocate to higher grounds as a result of the impending flooding in some parts of the state. The Commissioner for Communication and Orientation in the state, Chris Nehikare, said the state had been informed by relevant agencies of a likely flooding due to incessant torrential downpours across the country. Residents in lowlands and riverine areas, including those in Agenebode, Anegbete, and Ilulshi of Etsako East, Etsako Central, and Esan Southeast local government areas, and areas in Ikoba Oka, Ovia Northeast, and Ovia Southwest, respectively, are hereby put on notice to be vigilant and relocate to a higher plane. He said the government will provide the needed support required for residents displaced from their homes by flooding. The commissioner said the state government is also working closely with the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to ensure that residents affected by flooding have access to the internally displaced persons camps. After weeks of high prices, consumers in Gombe are finally enjoying a welcome decline in tomato costs. Now, this reduction has brought relief to both shoppers and the vendors. Local vendors attribute the price drop to an increased supply of locally cultivated tomatoes entering the market, which has effectively stabilized prices. Hassan Kohli reports. Despite the significant reduction in tomato prices in Gwambi, consumer patronage has not returned to previous levels. <laughs> Mohammed Mekaemia, a bendo, has seen a drastic decline in customers attributing this downtown to both the recent price increases in tomatoes and spices as well as the overall high cost of living. I guess
well fries of tomatoes, hot peppers, and onions has reduced by almost 50 percent compared to the last few weeks. However, people have stopped buying them. It is primarily due to the current economic condition and the artificiality it has inflicted upon us. In fact, I lost more than 70 percent of my customers. It is worrisome. It is indeed welcome development for both vendors and buyers. During the Salah period, most people were not able to buy a tomato or hot pepper due to the high cost. During the set period, a 50 kg bag of hot pepper was sold for 150,000 to 160,000 naira against the current price of 75,000 to 80,000 naira. However, people are still not patronizing our moves. The decrease in price of the commodities may be connected to the early tomato harvest period in Gombe. In the last few weeks, we have been buying tomatoes in faraway places, which is a major factor in its cost. But the recent local production, leading to a larger supply of tomatoes in the market, prices are going down by 40 to 50 percent. However, despite the development, people are not patronizing it. They are concerned about grains and basic food items to feed their families. Many people have stopped using tomatoes and hot peppers, opted instead for cheaper spices to lower the cost of their dishes. From Gombe, Hassan Kohli, reporting for Trust TV. President Bola Tinubu's mandate as chairman of the authority of ECOWAS heads of state and government was extended on Sunday at the conclusion of a summit of the sub-regional body. West African leaders at the 65th Ordinary Session in Abuja decided to ensure continuity and consistency in meeting ECOWAS targets on security, reconciliation and development. Ken Diabondo reports. President Tinumbu was first elected as chairman of the authority of ECOWAS heads of state and government in Guinea-Bissau on July 9, 2023. Since he came on board, ECOWAS under his leadership has had to deal with terrorist activities and violence extremism, threatening to spread from the Sahel region to coastal states. The body has also faced the challenge of unconstitutional change of government, which led to three Sahel countries, Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger, to withdraw from ECOWAS. Our region is still confronted with multiple interlocking threats, including existential ones. These include climatic and man-made crises, leading to terrorism and violent extremism and food insecurity. Livelihoods continue to be threatened by illegal and unsustainable exploitation of our land, forest, and marine resources. Nevertheless, the Nigerian president has promised to consolidate on the values of democracy and uphold the interest of the regional body, which will clock 50 years in 2025. I've accepted to continue the service with uh, great members and great minds that have I committed to democratic value and the journey uh, for us in, in the region. President Tinubu had earlier called on heads of state and government of ECOWAS to work towards establishment and sustenance of a regional standby force for the security and economic advancement of the community. Let me underscore that a peaceful and secure society is essential for achieving our potential. I must emphasize that the success of this plan requires not only strong political will, but also substantial financial resources. We must, therefore, ensure that we meet the expectations and recommendations set forth by our ministers of defense and finance in order to counter the insecurity and stabilize 
Arija. Going forward, the ECOWAS chairman appointed the president of Senegal, Basi Rufai, and the president of Togo, Thor Nasingbe, a special envoys to Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. From the 65th ordinary session of ECOWAS leaders in Abuja, Kainde Amudu, Trust TV News. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has filed a motion and a notice of appeal to challenge the ruling of Justice Namdi Dimba of the Federal High Court, which acquitted Abiodun Nagbele, an associate of the former Equity State Governor, Ayodele Fayoshe, and three others in the 1.2 billion naira money laundering charge brought against them by the Commission. In the notice of appeal, the EFCC, through its prosecuting counsel, Senior Advocate of uh, Nigeria, Wahab Shitu, listed 17 grounds of appeal and sought two reliefs from the Court of Appeal. Agbele and three companies linked to him and Fayoshi, namely Sylvan McNamara Limited, De Privateer Limited, and Sportless Investment Limited, were listed as the first and fourth respondent in the appeal. The 1.2 billion naira is said to be part of the sum of 4.7 billion naira belonging to the federal government and allegedly transferred from an account associated with the Office of the National Security Advisor, the NSA, in the Central Bank of Nigeria. On the 21st of June 2024, Justice Dingba upheld the no case submission of Agbele and ruled that he had no case to answer to. The Commissioner of Police, Imo State Command, Abu Kitlen Juma, has condemned the attack and murder of three vigilante personnel at Afo Umwaka of Umwaka community in Njaba, local government area of the state, by gunmen on Sunday. The state police public relations officer, Henry Okoye, in a statement on Monday, said in the wake of the tragic incident that claimed the lives of three gallant vigilantes who were on routine crime prevention patrol and a passerby, the commissioner of the police had deployed the command's tactical squad with the available operational resources to go all out in synergy with other security agencies and hunt down the hoodlums responsible for the dastardly act. Njuma expressed sadness over the incident and vowed that the command will leave no stone unturned in ensuring that the perpetrators are all arrested and brought to justice. In health, a pharmacist in the country have expressed satisfaction with the presidential executive order aimed at introducing zero tariffs, excise duties and value-added tax the VAT on imported pharmaceutical inputs. According to them, the order will bring down the skyrocketing prices of drugs in Nigeria and boost sustainable, high-quality health care in the country. The report. In an interview with Trust TV in Lagos, the pharmacist said prices of drugs have skyrocketed owing to the country's economic instability, which has made purchase of basic medications and supply almost out of reach for common men. However, they expressed optimism that the executive order would improve production for local manufacturers, strengthen drug security, and healthy living among Nigerians. So this is a security order to support the local manufacturers uh, who first bring down the cost of medications for the common man, but most importantly, it is also enhance uh, the pharmaceutical sector so, so that many people who are interested in investing in the pharmaceutical sector will be able to invest in it. And then that will create jobs. It will improve access to healthcare because the heart of uh, healthcare is availability and affordability of medicine for the for the common man. So what does this entail? It entails that now local manufacturers can be able to get their excipient, the active pharmaceutical ingredients, and the machinery they need to function and operate at a very affordable prices. And that will means that the cost of producing medications will be reduced and hopefully that will translate to the common man on the market. So many, we have over 150 pharmaceutical companies in Nigeria. And if those companies truly align with this executive order, then we believe that in the next six to 12 months, the high cost of price for the common man should reduce, especially from local manufacturers. Because there are some patients that want to come to pharmacies and um, they found out that if the drug is expensive, they find it difficult to afford it. But this measure taken by the president as this measure taken by the president is uh, is a great 
is a greatly improved measure and it will also reduce the rate of um, death rates. It will increase the rate of um, livelihood by all individuals in our country. To improve competitiveness among local manufacturers, they urge the federal government to also offer assistance by urging public hospitals to pay debts they owe pharmaceutical firms and provide suitable for other production variables like the cost of fuel and electricity. This is Trust News Update. Coming up. Rise in metal scraps demand from multinationals hit iron recycling value chain. This and more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. If you're just joining us, this is News Update on Trust TV. Here's a recap of our top stories. Federal government issues flawed alerts, activates state emergency centers as governors order evacuation. And Gombe residents welcome decline in tomato costs. Moving on to educational matters, the Academic Staff Union of Universities said it will be meeting with the federal government on July 25th, 2024, over its unmet demands. This was on as non-academic staff of universities declared on Sunday that they were set for a one-day protest on Tuesday on campuses over their withheld four-month salaries. The one-day protest will be a prelude of to a nationwide protest planned for July 18th. The national president of ASO, Professor Emmanuel Osodeke, disclosed this on Sunday. Osodeke said July 25th was the implementation date in the timeline agreed to with the federal government. ASO chapters across campuses in the country have been engaging in protest for some weeks now. Rusty, a condemned metal that are often discarded by many and now a significant source of income, especially for scavengers. These items have in recent times found ready buyers as some foreign companies base the Nigeria source for them for recycling into other products. That's why the rise in demand scavengers are yet to come to the terms with the opportunities that is around uh, in this industry as the items are bought at a giveaway prices, leaving many wondering how Nigerians can break into the value chain to better the economy. The report. In today's economy, nothing is a waste as what may seem unimportant to one person is a money spinner for another. Rusty, condemned iron metal, used papers and cartons that are discarded by many are being collected by scavengers and sold to earn a living. In Lagos State, metal scraps have become a significant source of income as many have turned it into a full-scale business with proper offices. In the Agige local government area, metal scraps and cartons are gathered by scavengers who search the streets for these materials. For the carton, we must buy the capulun, cover the carton, wear, wear before you carry and go the company. If you know the one like that, then you spoil. That's a carton one. But iron one, then you the spoil for iron. There are a lot of challenges. There are a lot of challenges. Uh, from sourcing the strap items to stocking, stocking them and uh, to ultimately taking them to uh, the original destination. Some of the scavengers declined to be captured on camera but told Trust TV that regular scraps can earn them 15,000 to 25,000 naira per day, while larger and weightier iron pieces fetch them up to 30,000 to 50,000 naira per day. Now, got everything where we are buying here, they are condemning it. Like uh, those person one pack for a house, some things, uh, some piece people they pick them for bola to come, to come sell them for us. Only reach some quantity, we we'll carry them to company like Ragulis like uh, all those holy zinc, like uh, any condemned something. Actually, we used to, that small scales, we used to, if they bring small market, we used to scale it on top of the scale, small scales. That big one is for bigger market, like heavy iron. So that one, if he, he used to carry like a three ton, this small one, yeah, we used to carry market like, 100 ton or 150 like that while many have expressed reservation with how these metals are sourced following cases of theft 
Others want Nigerians to build conversion or recycling centers that will ensure that the wealth from the industry remains in the country while foreign companies involved are supervised to ensure that they are not promoting metal theft in the country. On the international scene, at least 11 people have lost their lives and 19 more are missing after heavy rains caused the landslide near an illegal gold mine on Indonesia's central island of Sulawesi. An official said on Monday that unlicensed mines are common across the mineral-rich Southeast Asian archipelago where abandoned sites attract locals who hunt for leftover gold or without proper safety equipment. The landslide hit a remote village in the Bone Bolango district of Gorontalo province late Saturday after spells of torrential rain, killing at least 11 and leaving more than a dozen still unaccounted for. Eight people who have died have been evacuated. Five people survived but were injured from light to heavy injuries. And in sport, swimming sensation Farida Usman's dream of representing Egypt in her fourth Olympics have been dodged by the narrowest of margins. A six-time All-African gold medalist failed to reach the qualification standard of 24.70 seconds in the 15-meter freestyle by a mere two hundredths of a second. Also a three-time World Championship bronze medalist, Usman had previously been confirmed for the Pirates Games but will now not be able to take part due to limited quota restrictions. The 29-year-old had wanted to represent African, Arab and Muslim women around the world. And with that, we wrap up News Update on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching.